Alright everybody, this is Eternal Blade here and welcome back to the Cruise Cabin Texturing Video Tutorial. Um, so just a quick update. So last time we left off, this is sort of the image that we have had rendered. Uh, so you can see we worked on the wood and whatnot. It looks pretty good. Uh, may need a little bit of, you know, kind of work, but uh, we'll keep plugging away and uh, we'll just do some refinements uh, towards the end. So today I've determined that we're going to sort of start off with the, um, I guess we're going to do the fruit basket. I kind of want to want to do the fruit basket. So let's uh, go into perspective mode here and let's just select some of our fruit. Um, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this without selecting everything, but it really doesn't exist. Okay, there we go. And let's um, isolate selection and just hide that. So now we just have sort of oh, hide that too. We don't want that. Hide selection. There we go. So now we just have our fruit here. So let's start off by working on the apples. So bring up your handy dandy Google. And basically I just Googled apple texture. And we're just going to sort of choose one. So. Hmm. That looks pretty good. Let's save this image as. And again, I mean, we're just doing this for training. So it's not like we're making money off it or anything. Um, so go to your projects folder. Your projects, cruise cabin, textures. Apple diffuse, and you can, uh, and I would probably recommend you do a little better job uh, with the organization. My next tutorial, hopefully, I can do that. Uh, but this one, I was sort of really into it, so I just like to go and organize later. So let's um, call this Apple. Just dragged and dropped the V-Ray material, and in the diffuse slot, we're going to, of course, do standard bitmap, and we will apply. Our apple diffuse okay so here we go now let's just uh, click that and show material in the viewport and we will drag it onto an apple and right away you see we actually sort of have some good apple coverage there but let's uh, just see what we can do here so we're gonna do a apply UVW map now let's give it a spherical map and see what that does nope. cylindrical just trying to play around with the different maps. Box might be the one we eventually go with. Shrink wrap, nah. Planer, no. All right, so let's assume we have a spherical map here. We can bring the size sort of way, actually we'll just fit. And the read for the X form is sort of a little messed up, but just sort of bring it in and pretend. Okay, there we go. Now go to your gizmo. This R, now you can, or E, and you can rotate the texture so that way the uh, little white spot is sort of on top. There we go. So now you sort of have a nice little apple texture. Now this is going to be so far away that you don't have to really worry about anything, you know, like the little issue you have there. I guess you can try to... I wonder if we do cylindrical and cap it, if that'll be any better. Hmm. Let's delete this for a second. Actually doesn't look bad that way. I kind of like the look of that. Nothing's really stretched, so... We're just going to use that for now. And we're going to see how it looks. If we need to apply a UVW map, well, we can always do it. Oops, watch how you don't move them too much. Just press Q. I'm selecting all of our apples, and we can we can change them up a little later. Um, there we go. Apply selected, just so they're not all the exact same. Um, all right, and there we go. So next, go into our apple material here, and let's give it a bit of a reflection. Apples do reflect. So show the background in the preview window, so just a little bit. Bring them closest down to 0.9, 0.8. 0.8 is about right for a shiny apple, and there really isn't too much bump in an apple. I mean, maybe a little bit, but it won't be worth it for what we're rendering, okay? Now let's go back into Google, and let's just find, let's grab just another, um, maybe we'll grab sort of a different color apple. Let's see what we've got here. We'll do a green apple. 
So let's grab this texture here. View image. That uh, looks pretty fake. I like to get real images if I can, just because they work a lot better. I'll try this one. Save image as, and we'll call this green apple diffuse. Okay. Let's just grab this material, shift drag it. All right, and we'll call this green apple. Oops, not frame. All right, and just go into bitmap here. And we'll just change this to the green apple bitmap. All right, same settings for the most part. And let's just drag it on a couple of these apples here. And these may require um, UVW maps. So we're just going to UVW map. Let's do cylindrical fit. And how does that look? Let's have a seam. Obviously, it's not tileable. So we'll see if we can hide the seam. And again, it may even be in the back. We'll never see the seam. But basically, that little thing needs to go on the bottom. And then we'll sort of rotate it like so. And bring it back. And there we go. Now we've got a nice little green apple there. And yeah, it has a seam right in there somewhere. But rotate the apple. Seam disappears. OK? Now looking from the camera, you can see, I mean, this is just, it's just minuscule. So we're going to do one more. I don't want that one. one. That one. Make this one a green apple as well. Okay, just to give it some variation. All right, back to perspective. And you just come in here and basically just drag and drop the UV map. And it should fix you right up. Perfect. All right, now let's go back into Google and do a plum texture. Not plum textured wallpaper, but just a plum texture. Okay. And let's see, these are some weird looking plums. That is ugly. All right, plum fruit. Hmm. That actually, well, yeah. no, it still wouldn't work. This one though might work. Resolution's a bit low on it, but for what we're doing, I think it should be good. All right, so let's save image as plum diffuse. Okay, I'll go back here and we'll just copy another one of these babies up. There we go. And we'll call it plum. And we'll give it the plum bitmap here, just swap it out. Okay, and we'll give this. Uh, a bit higher diffuse, maybe like 0.6. Because the plums are sort of fuzzy. All right, now come in here, just using your Q, and we can select all of our plums. Another one in there. All right, and sign material to selection. And you can just show in the viewport. There we go. Now we've got some nice plums. And you can obviously see that. I may need a bit of rotating just to hide the seams. Nothing too bad, but it's going to be super far away, so good deal. Now, for the grapes, I would like to do subsurface scattering in the grapes, and I might. Actually, eh, might as well do it. We're already here. So let's do a, a V-Ray Fast SSS2 subsurface scattering number two, and call this grapes. All right, and first let's um, deselect everything that isn't a grape. All right, I believe we've got all of our grapes. And we'll just isolate the selection for a bit. Actually, we don't even really need to do that. Let's just assign material to selection and isolate. And actually, there you can see sort of how it's going. So that'll be a perfect fruit bowl. Um, oops, let's just click on that, and there we go. So now, let's see, we need to, let's change this to something like, hmm, maybe ketchup, ketchup's probably a pretty good place to start. 
And the diffuse color, let's make it obviously sort of a, a lighter green. The subsurface scattering color, we're going to sort of make it maybe try a bit darker green. Or just different color green. And the scatter color will be maybe give it sort of a a brownish color like that, okay? Now let's go into, oops, sorry. Go into our perspective here, our camera. And bring my render window up. Actually, first let me uh, save this. I haven't saved in a while. Diffuse Cabin 27. Okay, and let's just take a little area right here, just like that, and let's give it a quick render and see what we get. So there you go, you can see what we've got. And I mean, that looks absolutely incredible, super realistic <laughs> to me. Um, comparing it to the actual image over here, I mean, that fruit is pretty much spot on. They just have some different types of fruits, um, but basically it, it's perfect. Uh, one of the things I do want to do, though, I think, is maybe, let me just drag this over here, go to our plum texture, output, maybe darken the output to like, I guess you can't do that. I'm hoping to just... Hmm. Alright, let's go into Photoshop. Open it. You can use GIMP as well. It works just the same. And this image adjustments, brightness contrast. Let's just bring the brightness down. I sort of want a darker plum. Adjustments. Let's do hue saturation. We can darken it up a bit. Give it sort of a more vivid color. There you go. We'll just save that. All right, and then we reload, and we see we have a nice sort of darker plum texture there. So if we go back into our window here, and we do a quick re-render, we'll see what we get. All right, there you go. Now we can see we have sort of darker plums right there, which is exactly what we want. And you can even sort of see the subscatter on the grapes, I'm hoping, kind of right in here. So that should be pretty much perfect for that. Um, so that is the fruit bowl. Uh, next, I guess we can do the little black uh, thing here. So we're actually going to go and do a couple things here. First is, let's find on the amazing Google a leather texture. Okay, now we're looking for something relatively dark, almost a black leather. So let's even better, let's do tileable. Well, seamless, same thing. All right, here we go. That should work perfect. All right, let's save the image as um, black leather fuse. And it looks like there is sort of a, let's just do um, gold diamond logo. All right, it looks like there's something kind of like this on the front. So we're just gonna sort of I'll we'll just do just gold logo. What does that come up with? Mm, that's not bad. But really, it's just sort of a diamond. Let's see. Diamond logo? Hmm. Alright, we'll use... I don't want to use Apple. I don't like Apple. Just sort of one of those things. This one's not bad. I don't know what it is, but black gold diamond. Okay, fine. We'll just use a save image as uh, gold logo. All right. Uh, first thing we need to do is let's perspective Z. We'll kind of go in here and see what we've got. So the pages look pretty dark too. I may assign in the leather material uh, as well. I mean, looking at the image here, you can see they're sort of not paper colored, but darker. Uh, we'll see. All right, so let's do a VR material here. We'll call this dark leather or black leather. Okay, and diffuse map, standard bitmap. 
let's get that black leather diffuse going. All right, perfect. And it does have a reflection. We 75 and 0 0.7, 6. 0.6 is probably about good. And we can go to the bump map. So let's just shift drag that one down. Bring in the bump map here. And then we need to go here, output and invert. All right. And let's change the bump map to maybe like 90. Not seeing very much, even though it's inverted. Let's see, we just don't have enough contrast. So let's go over to Photoshop here, file, open. Let's get that black leather diffuse here. Image adjustments and brightness contrast. Let's bring the contrast way up. All right, kind of doing this. Image adjustments, brightness contrast. Contrast and brightness, okay. Image adjustments, make it black and white. Okay, and that should be good. Image adjustments, let's do um, shadows and highlights and see if we can, there we go. All right, image adjustments, let's do another uh, brightness contrast and bring the brightness down a bit, perfect. File, save as, leather bump. Okay, and then let's just use that for the bump map instead of what we had. Standard bitmap, let's go to leather bump. All right, there, and immediately you can see you have a nice leather texture there now. Let's dial this back to maybe 50. 50 is probably good. And come in here. And let's see, maybe blur a little more, maybe two, 1.5 seems about good. Okay, and let's, we're gonna wanna show this map in the viewport when we apply, let's apply it. And uh, we'll assign the selection for now. All right, so group, we're gonna ungroup that, and just grab the top of the book piece, UVW, and we're gonna hopefully yep, use a box Good deal. What's the tiling kind of? Mm, 2.5, 2.5, 2 2.5. 2 That'll give you kind of a nice, you know, leather-looking material. And on the sides here, hmm. Let's just play with the height a bit. There we go. Height was just a bit off. Good deal. So we've got that. And then let's grab that and let's do a V-Ray um, blend material, I think is what I want. And let's go to Photoshop real quick. File, open. I believe we had a logo here. Yes, we do. Image, let's do um, magic wand select. Sort of. Oh, I have no idea what we just did. We don't want to do that. So let's unlock this layer and select color range, just like the black, and delete it. Okay, we don't really have any need for it. All right, and that should be good enough for what we want. So file, save as. Um, Gold logo background remove and then go to open and let's see where to go. Let's open the gold logo again. And this time we're going to select color range this and give it a bit higher fuzziness. Okay, um, select invert and delete. Oops, uh, we don't want to do that. Let's just unlock that, and now we delete it. Okay, and let's do a new layer, and we'll just make this white. I just press X to swap those, and we're gonna fill it with white. There we go. And file, save as, uh, gold logo, mask.
Okay, and so now, if we make another VR material here, we'll call this gold logo, and we'll apply a diffuse map to it, standard bitmap, and let's grab that gold logo background removed. Okay, you can see it here, and let's sort of give it, make it pretty shiny. And it doesn't really need anything else. Okay. Now this leather is going to be the base of our VR material. And coat one is going to be this. Okay. And then we're going to blend it using a bitmap that ideally is the black and white version of this. We Here it is, gold logo mask. Okay. So now you see we have the black background with the logo on it. Okay. Now if we apply that, we're not gonna really see anything, I guess. Well, I guess you can't really see it, so we're gonna go in here, go to our camera view, and just render out this little portion and just see what we get. So I'm not sure how to, off the top of my head, view the logo um, on this easily. I have an idea if this doesn't work very well, but. We're gonna find out. Okay, so we've got some interesting, sorry, so here's our logo. That's really weird. Oh, it's the logo wrapping around the side, okay. So what we have to do is, let's go back into perspective here. Oops, and, and let's grab, um, edit poly, just grab this top piece here. And we can make this, uh, we'll just detach it. Okay, so now this is separate. Now we can apply just, we'll apply this leather material to everything else that we had. And this one though, we'll apply to only the top polygon. Okay, now I'm actually gonna show this in the viewport. Uh, show and blend material. This is where we can see the orientation of the logo. So, what we need to do is come in here, tiling maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, that's too big I think, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, all right, let's do a little offset here. Just trying to sort of center just the texture. There's other ways to do this, and in fact, I probably should be doing another method, but. Okay. Now let's see if we can. Oh, this isn't going to quite work the way we want. No, actually, yeah, it will. Perfect. There we go. Now we've got sort of a logo, maybe a little smaller. No, the problem is if we get a little smaller, um, we'll start to see the um, side image. Now we can avoid that if we do this. So let's go here, image, um, canvas size. Let's just increase this by 200%. Okay, and then in the bottom layer here, Let's just fill it with black. Okay, so now our mask is a lot bigger. So we'll just save that as our, oh, God damn it, I hate that. Save as a uh, gold logo mask. Let's do a JPEG. Okay, good deal. Background removed, image uh, canvas size. Just change that by 200%. Okay, and of course that's a PSD as well. Well, it has to be a PSD. Um, save as, we can use a PNG that also has transparency. And, all right. So now let's just swap some textures around here. The background removed, let's see. Logo background removed, here's the smaller logo, there we go. And, our blend material map, 
logo mask. So gold logo mask. Okay, there we go, perfect. So now if we render out the same little portion, if we're lucky, we should have um, just one little logo in the center. Okay, not quite. We have a lot of little logos. Uh, hmm. Why is that? I'm just trying to think of what would be causing this. Uh, maybe another UVW. Oops, actually, let's grab just the top piece there. Let's do a box map. And. Alright. Let's just drag this gizmo over sort of here ish. Okay, let's try again. Eventually, this is going to have to work. All right, here we go. All right, still not working quite the way I want it to work. Um, let me go into this black leather material here, actually, real quick. Perspective, oops. I'll grab the rest of the book here. And UW. No idea where we are. Odd. All right. And let's just, all right, just want to make sure the leather here is good, and it is. And let's see, hide on your bow material, no, I want that. Okay. Yeah. One and one tiling with zero offset. Are we sure this? Okay, that's um. It looks perfect here. Let's actually go to our gold logo here. Um, give it. Well, we don't really want to do that now. Unlock and maybe change this to like eight. I don't want it to be really shiny. And it's obviously lacking a little bit of detail, but okay. Let's uh, let's try again with what we've got, and we'll give it a re-render. Okay, still didn't quite work uh, as I was anticipating. Don't want to just use just that texture because that won't work very well. But I may have to. So let's um, go to Photoshop, open up our uh, black leather diffuse texture. Okay, image adjustments. Let's go to actually canvas size and we'll give it 300% bigger. All right, there we go. And unlock the background. We're just gonna copy this texture. Oop, that's not gonna quite work what we wanted to do. Let's copy the texture and then go to canvas size and give it 300%. Okay, now paste what we have in here. Okay, and paste it again on the other side. Deal. And then you can merge these layers. Well, no, actually, don't merge them yet. Just grab these two and merge them. All right. And let's move these up. I'm sure there's an easy way to do this. I just don't know what it is. Okay, and let's move them down. enough and um, we'll just sort of grab one of them this one and center it Oops. ok 
Okay, we'll grab it again and we'll just bring it here to the bottom. Perfect. And uh, now you can merge all these layers together. All right, merge layers. And you can crop it just a little bit to get the bottom off. Okay, now goes your gold logo. Oops, just copy it, paste, and here we go, gold logo. And let's actually press Control T and just go like that. There we go. Um, let's save that as um, book cover. All right. So let's copy our black leather book cover. Okay. Perspective, zoom in on, on the book. And we'll apply uh, oops, the bitmap there. Except we'll change it to book cover. All right. Now we can fit it. Let's see, why are we not showing up here? One. Mm hmm. All right, let's take our gizmo and move it around and see if we can find. Did we assign this? There, there we go. Okay. So here we go. Now we've got our texture going on and we'll leave the bump as is so now I hopefully if we render this out this took a lot longer than I was hoping we can see what, all right there we go now we have a nice sort of texture there let's actually go into our leather here and change the bump to 30 just for the book cover at least um, actually maybe for this bit as well and uh, bring the reflections down just a touch kind of 45 ish actually maybe 34 okay they were just a bit too uh, bright for me uh, let's give it a re-render all right that should be good uh, these little speckles on it are coming because of the low render settings i'm using right now so that should be uh, cleared up i hope but if not, we can always bump up the reflections just on the top cover to, re to simulate uh, that. Now let's do um, let's copy this black leather again. Okay. Go here to your output and change it to something like three, mm, five, nine. Just trying to lighten it up quite a bit and I'm going to use this for the pages inside the book because they seem like the pages are actually um, made of leather too I don't know how that is but maybe they're sort of encompassed in leather uh, so we're just going to grab these pages here okay go here and sign selected there we go now in the camera view if we render those out should be able to see the pages uh, should be a bit lighter than the actual um, book itself. Yep, there we go. Now we can see the pages are obviously a bit lighter there. So that is exactly what we're looking for. All right. Um, next, what we want to do is also assign. Uh, where do we go? Our wood material that we created at some point. This looks like not wood. Panel, mm. no, ah, wood. So that needs to get assigned to this. Uh, let's actually go in here. That needs to be assigned to that. All right. I actually think it needs to be sort of assigned to all of these uh, pieces as well, as well as this outer trim portion. 
I think it's supposed to be assigned to this as well. I mean, this is sort of the same color as everything else. Okay, so let's assign to selected. There we go. Uh, now let's do some UVW mapping here. So UVW box should work. Okay, and maybe I think we want to rotate this. So gizmo E and just rotate it 90 degrees just so the lines go um, sort of this way. And that should work nicely. And over here, let's see, what do we got? That is interesting. So they wrap around nicely one way, but not the other. Maybe we'll actually change this to a cylinder and see if that doesn't oh, and cap it. See if that doesn't resolve our problem up here. That looks pretty good. You can see we have some nice little thin things here. Uh, increase the height of it just to spread that out. And we still need to go to the gizmo and rotate this just like so. Make sure we didn't harm the top at all. And we're still mostly good to go there. Actually, we'll let that be. I kind of liked it the way it was a little better. All right, now let's uh, zoom in here and just do a UVW map. All right, and box should work. And just sort of make it a bit longer. You can copy and paste the UVW map over there. That should work. And over here, let's do another UVW. Make it a box. And let's see what do we got. Maybe not a box, maybe a sphere. Nope. Cylinder. Uh, we could do a planer. It'd actually probably be our best bet. That's actually not bad. Okay, there we go. That should work for now. Um, let's see. Now let's work on sort of the um, couch. So let's go to Photoshop here and open up our black leather to diffuse, which is already open. Hmm. Interesting. Don't say changes. Okay, there we go. And let's just stop that. Uh, image adjustments. And we're gonna go to hue saturation. And we're just gonna make this sort of a uh, ideally a cream color. Here's some sort of light. Eh, actually, it's probably just better to do to find a brand new texture for this in, as opposed to editing this one. So let's go to palable leather texture. Let's see if we can get something sort of cream like. Actually, I'm not even sure if that is leather. It might not be. Hmm. If it is, it'd be something like that but I'm not convinced. It seems too smooth. We're just gonna sort of texture it manually because I'm not convinced that's leather. So let's uh, grab a new viewer of material, assign to selected. So now we're working on the couch here. Okay, and let's go to the diffuse and make it sort of this orangish almost cream color. Or just like an egg, almost an eggshell. Okay, and it does have some reflections here. 
Not much, but a little bit. Okay, and then we'll make them pretty uh, diffuse here. And then in the, actually, I guess we should probably do yeah, that. Might work. All right, we're gonna we're gonna give that a render and uh, see what it looks like. Because I really don't really know for now. So we're just gonna render that out and see what we get. All right, so honestly, that's not that bad. Um, we're getting some good reflections in here. Actually, it looks pretty good. Uh, maybe it does need some bump. Yeah. I'm just trying to think what can make it seem a little more realistic. Um, I think we maybe need a fall off map here. All right, let's go to the diffuse map. And we're going to do a standard fall off, okay? And we're going to copy this color and paste and paste. So this way, the, let's see, let's just make this purple. Okay, so this is going to need to be lighter. So basically almost a white color. This will do is as you're looking at it, let's re-render this, the portions that are angled away from you should be sort of lighter than the portions that are angled towards you. So we'll see how effective this actually is. All right, so that is definitely effective. So you can see how these are whiter than you know this color right here. So that will definitely increase our um, scene a bit. Now I do want to give it maybe a bit of a bump. Um, so let me go to Google here and just type in um, leather creases. Maybe that's what I want. And just trying to think how I can do this. Because it's not it's not leather, but it sort of has some of the same characteristics. We'll try this one. Let's save this image as um, leather bump. Couch, a leather couch bump. Ah, oh, poor, my fingers are cold. All right, and let's go to the bump map here. Standard bitmap. Let's type in. Well, not that bump. Where's the one we just found? There it is. Okay. So you see, we get a little bit of bump going on there. Let's blur that quite a bit. So maybe four, three, three seems doable. And now what we can do, let's just show this in the viewport real quick, just so we can see um, sort of what it would look like. So this obviously needs some help. Let's give it a box. There we go. Not bad. These all look good. Okay. Well, we've got that. Let's go to the camera again and re-render that little bit and see if that helped us at all. Okay, so I didn't see too many changes. So we're going to go here, output, and invert it. Actually, bump it up to two. I don't know, leave it at one. Or two, maybe. Go here, maps, change the bump to maybe 60. And let's give it a re-render. All right, so now I can start to see a little bit of it in there. So that actually doesn't look so bad. A little, little help with the lighting, and I think we can we can make that work. Yeah, I think I think that'll be perfect. All right, so let's um, I'll call it an end uh, to this part. So in the next part, we'll come back and uh, continue working. So I will see you guys next time.